Agriculture, the agricultural sector contributes quite significantly um, um, to climate climate change, um, and but additionally is also um, very much affected um, by the impact of, of climate change. We all know that agriculture production is going to decline by more than 20, 20 to 30 percent um, by 2050. Um, I think what is much more important and is being covered by those aggregate numbers is how much um, climate change will affect specific countries in their agricultural production. So if you look what, what the science just tells us about how this is going to evolve with um, <coughs> global warming, um, we have to admit that more than 40% of the agricultural land that nowadays is being used for coffee production is going to be lost by 2050. This means that a high percentage of those people living in those countries that are dependent on their agricultural income are going to um, lose income um, and their survival strategies are going to be yeah, um, damaged, not damaged, will be impacted quite heavily. So how do we deal with this type of transformation that is being needed in order that the agriculture sector can contribute? Uh, to contain global warming, but at the same time, how we can make sure that the transformation takes place in those countries that are dependent on a huge agricultural production, not only for um, food self-sufficiency, but also for, for experts. It doesn't come to a surprise that more than 90% of all NDCs presented um, by countries actually contain elements on agriculture, uh, landscape restoration, um, and the transformation that is being needed. So for us, when we shaped the NDC partnership um, and we started to work on our um, uh, work plan and um, what we should do first, actually it became quite obvious that we have to pay much more attention to agriculture. Um, and we are very happy that already last year we decided to install a thematic working group led by the FAO um, to give us more insights what is being needed, how do we approach advice and knowledge sharing um, that is needed for developing countries. Over the last 18 months I see a major evolution in the debate on agriculture and climate change uh, promoted by Morocco, last year Marrakesh, this led to quite, I would say, um, sound um, decisions at this um, climate conference here in Bonn. Um, the agriculture issue is going to remain on, on not only on the radar screen for all of us, but especially it's going to be um, included into the different work streams um, of the subsidiary body of the UNFCCC conferences. That's good. I think we in the development uh, field, we have to recognize that we have to further mainstream climate change in our programs and projects that deal with the agricultural sector and, and rural regions. Then within the NDC partnership, we took a first step. We are going to address issues of institution building, capacity building and advisory services that are being needed in order to mainstream climate change issues into our normal development programs. I think we also have to look into the field what, what kind of financial assistance is being needed in order to give developing countries um, the type of support that they need urgently. And we also have to increase the financial means um, to, to this area in order to, to increase and scale up action um, that is needed. More or less one third of the projects that have been um, agreed upon um, in the GCF so far deal with agricultural issues. And this may be due to the fact that already FAO and IFAD have been one of the first institutions that have been accredited to the GCF. So apparently there is a good portfolio evolving under the GCF. It's not only about the agricultural sector. When you look into the issues, you may actually identify that we speak about the transformation of a whole economy. So the big point is, if we, through the GCF process, actually address those transformational 
um, issues that have to be addressed. And this may not be necessarily only in the agricultural sector, but probably it has to do with other sectors that could actually provide the jobs that are going to be lost in the agricultural sector. It may have to do with building up human capital so that you mm -hmm. can actually increase the value um, added within your own economy. Uh, so in, instead of having an extensive agriculture sector, you do something where you have more value added within your economy and so forth. This is now the big challenge for the GCF. Um, to move from the first set of projects and programs that have been presented by national institutions, UN organizations, FAO and IFAD, to this type of transformational endeavors that are needed in order really to, to embrace the whole magnitude of the program, the problem that we have to address jointly. Well, in principle, as, as um, the German Development Cooperation Ministry, um, I would like to start by underlining that we have increased our endeavors in the agricultural sector quite significantly last um, in the last political term under the program One World Without Hunger. Um, so the specific approach that we take on, on agriculture and climate change is more or less the approach that the FAO has developed and which has been named as um, uh, climate smart agriculture. And we have developed like a, a five prong um, um, approach. The first um, part is mainstreaming. What do you need in order to mainstream climate change issues into your in agricultural endeavor? Um, a very key message that we have learned is actually that you have to do proper assessments to know specifically what should be differently done in future in projects, in programs, in policy. Um, um, advice and so forth. So mainstreaming depends on good assessments. This is a new feature within our cooperation. Secondly, that we um, actually have started to bring climate change issues into specific programs through specific activities, adaptation to climate change, but also the mitigation issues. This may be issues addressing different research that we need, a change in the advisory services on the spot in developing countries, so that small-scale farmers are better informed about the change um, in weather patterns and its impact um, on, um, in, on their, their agriculture production. Uh, thirdly, um, we invest much more on taking a, a bigger approach on resilience. So they actually we, we, we already identify that the impact is so big that it doesn't suffice that we only concentrate on agricultural productivity, for instance, or on um, or water issues that affect agriculture uh, production. We, we look at the, the broader uh, livelihood of communities and small scale farmers and try to build in into programs issues to, to reinforce the resilience that they have by either, for instance, additional employment opportunities or, for instance, by climate risk insurance schemes that work at the micro level. Fourthly, and this leads much more to the policy level. So one issue is to do the right things on the spot. But as I said, when you really want to deal with the big transformation that is needed, taking into account how the agriculture sector is going to be affected in the medium and longer term by climate change, we have to address the policy level. And there I think the NDC partnership is the right entry point. Because it doesn't address only the agriculture ministry or the environment ministry. Actually, the NDC partnership has the focus to work with planning ministries, um, with the finance ministries, make sure that we really shift the whole um, development planning and the, the whole medium term um, policy um, of, of a specific countries. If you want to deal with climate change at the country level, you really have to take um, a cross-sectoral um, coherent approach and what is needed is actually that you work together across ministries um, and across sectors. The NDC partnership actually is also a learning platform to do this, to see the interconnections, to work in the nexus arenas between, for instance, water and energy, energy and agriculture, and make sure that you identify the sweet parts where you can have actually maximum co-benefits when you deal with climate change. And finally, 
And this is quite important not only for us here in Germany, but especially for developing countries that have far more challenges when it comes to their development. You have, for big transformation, you need the support of your population in your society. So um, the fifth uh, change in our um, programming is actually that we more forcefully promote um, inclusive processes uh, by bringing in the private sector, the civil society, making sure that the changes that have to occur really get um, the support that is being needed within, within society. If you look how much food is wasted nowadays, and then more or less one third of what is being harvested is being lost, even more in developed countries than in developing countries. Um, I think what we have to address, and this is a cross-cutting issue um, across all sectors that we are working in, is actually to try to change um, behavior. Um, where it is needed. Well, we know that post-harvest um, loss um, losses are in developing countries are mainly due to a lack of technology and infrastructure. In, in, develop, in developed countries, it's much more an issue of consumption. Mm. Um, yeah, and the availability and, um, and how we deal with food. Um, so I see actually when you look at the impact of climate change on agriculture, it's absolutely right to look at the local conditions in developing countries. But across the world and globally, we should also dedicate um, more attendance, uh, attention to those behavioral changes that are really needed. And certainly the Development Cooperation Ministry um, is going to continuously address also behavioral changes um, in our own country, for instance, in the German sustainability strategy, where already in the past we have actually um, um, advocated for clearer indicators on post-harvest losses um, in order to reduce the food waste and open up the space for people to be better nourished um, um, in, their, in their living. I still felt at that time that the political debate um, was much more circling around uh, the two degrees so, um, goal, the mitigation efforts that have to be undertaken in developing and developed countries. Since Paris actually, and with the Paris Agreement, the agenda, the climate agenda has been continuously connected with the development agenda. And if you listen to the UN Secretary General um, and other international key uh, politicians, um, they always tell us this is like the two sides of a coin. No? You have the Paris Agreement and you have the SDGs. Uh, the Agenda 2030 has to be implemented within the guidelines of the Paris Agreement. This is much clearer than 10, 10 years ago. And, and this means that we have to approach climate and development issues um, alike at the same time in a coherent manner. Um, we always had a, a bigger um, ask from developing countries to take development issues much more into consideration when it comes to climate issues. Um, and they felt that, of course, the previous debate was about that they didn't want to forego development chances because they have to deal with climate change. But so this debate has changed dramatically. And even African countries, uh, which have now been at the forefront for pleading for more ambitious implementation of the Paris Agreement, have recognized it's not an either or, it's actually about doing two things at the same time. Um, without action, they recognize, that especially in some countries, um, possibilities for secure and, and um, and uh, peaceful uh, future for their populations will be quite limited. Climate cha challenge or uh, change already now affects um, the water provision for many populations. Um, there are disputes about access to land that still is actually um, um, available for agricultural production. And this type of conflicts around access to limited natural resources, this type of competition is going to grow. 
and climate change puts an additional stress factor on all um, um, these developments. I think that the whole climate change debate has actually simulated um, rethinking about what is needed, transformational changes that are being needed. Um, the two actually challenges that I see right now is I think I still see the industrialized countries that they have to take the lead. They have to be at the forefront of changes and be ambitious about the implementation. They can't expect that poorer countries take the lead. And uh, so far I think that be, and this has been also been recognized at the climate conference here in Bonn, um, I think that the world stands together um, after um, President Trump has opted out. Um, but still the rest uh, and even the major sectors of the US economy um, support the Paris Agreement. This is certainly good news. I see a lot of positive signals from the private sector. They have understood the message and the signals. And I think that they don't want any longer to do investments that are not climate um, proven. Transformation is not an issue that you can di dictate from the top. And depending on how the whole governance evolves in, in a country, in developing countries, and whether civil society has sufficient space um, to contribute to those um, developments and the, the transformation that has to take place, this is going to be a major factor for the success of those transformations. And at the start of 2018, what can we say? First, the agricultural sector is one of the most important issues that we have to address in the forthcoming years when we want to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement. Without agriculture and landscape changes, we won't get to 2 degrees or even significantly below 2 degrees Celsius. So this is key. It's by far the sector that is probably the most closest to people. So probably in, if we do the right things, we can see the most significant immediate impact on the well-being and the livelihoods of people, especially of poor people. So if you think about what is needed in order to make this world a place that is a little bit safer, a little bit more human, and respects human rights, probably investment into getting the agricultural sector on the right footing that would provide sufficient food, but at the same time respects the boundaries of the Paris Agreements is one of the best investments that we can do in the forthcoming years.